Welcome back to Indianomics. Before the break, we told you our poll respondents overwhelmingly expect a rate cut from the Reserve Bank. Now, our experts, Samitra Chaudhary of the Planning Commission, N. Se Chaudhary from Bank of India, and A. Prasanna from ICICI Securities Private Dealership Unit are with us to give their rationale on what the Reserve Bank ought to do. Gentlemen, welcome. Dr. Chaudhary, let me start with you. Uh, in the first place, CPI is still at 10.9%, uh, a rather ugly number that affects more Indians. As well, current account deficit, uh, the December number when it comes, is likely to be 6, some believe even over 6%. Uh, is that comfort zone for a monetary authority to cut rates? As far as CAD is concerned, the CAD is large, not because there is a very strong demand, excess demand in the country, but for some other reasons. So I think there is the nexus between that and monetary policy isn't there in a very direct fashion. As far as CPI is concerned, CPI number is very high because CPI has a much larger weight for food. As you may have noticed, food grain prices, particularly rice and wheat, are high because of basically reflecting past increases in MSP. Um, so that's why the CPI is much, so much more higher than the WPI. I think it's, it's a consistent numbers. Uh, and the, as far as the direction of inflation is concerned, other than food, yes, there is a downswing. And that does reflect to some extent stabilization of inflation. Okay, Dr. Sadhguru, let me take both these points separately with you. Uh, you know, the current account deficit uh, uh, being kind of immune to any uh, uh, demand from uh, 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 the, the citizenry at large, uh, you know, how, how can we arrive at that conclusion? After all, we are seeing oil imports still, uh, uh, you know, high, uh, which means there is the ability to buy and therefore the current account deficit will not go down sizably anytime soon. Uh, Clearly, that is uh, an underlying demand in the economy that is not being controlled by the right policies. So we are going to we are, we are going to face the current account deficit problem uh, for several more months to come, won't we? Yes, but the main reason why the current account deficit is up was so, so large in the month of uh, in the quarter and the December, as you as you suggest, is because gold imports are much higher in that quarter. It's very, very high and it's also very high in January and February. I don't see how monetary policy can affect the demand for gold. No, it gold can, won't are it? Gold so it, very different it can, things. won't it? If you reduce the interest rates in the economy, there is perhaps that much more people who are pushing into gold uh, uh, since uh, uh, they I, perceive I, negative I, real interest rates. I don't agree with no? that. And I don't agree with that very much because I think people who buy gold are not the kind of people who line up to put money in fixed deposits. I think they're kind of people who otherwise probably buy stocks or mutual funds or insurance uh, products and it's really a problem with those, marketing of those products and their attractiveness that possibly has driven gold up such a lot. Plus the fact that lately most of the gold imports, a large part of the gold imports has been done by banks or running ETFs. So these are, these are, these are kind of different kinds of demands. I don't think that they're very weight sensitive. And uh, we have to basically increase the appetite for financial paper, mm -hmm. which will take some time. But that is probably the most proximate reason why mm -hmm. the current account deficit will be high in the quarter and in December, mm -hmm. other than the fact that also net invisible earnings might be a bit slower. Mm -hmm. I mean, the only way you can get a very high current account deficit, we know the trade deficit number, we don't know the net invisible, perhaps software earnings have been hit a bit. If you look at top line of yep. the software companies, the listed companies, the results are not very encouraging for the December and that quarter. Mm. Hopefully they'll be better in the current quarter. Okay. So I think these are just a separate set of issues altogether. No, okay, I take that point, but I'm still not quite convinced that an interest rate cut uh, will not increase imports, at least in some fashion. Uh, Prasanna, let me toss the same question to you. Uh, after all, non-oil imports is the one that is falling. That is the only, uh, uh, you know, softer part which is keeping the current account deficit from lo looking even uglier. Now, if the purpose of the rate cut actually is to increase industrial consumption and industrial output, then directly it will increase non-oil imports, won't it? So, can you really buy the argument that uh, cutting uh, interest rates will not increase non-oil imports? I think what we have to recognize is there is always a lag, right? I mean, RBA has cut rates, banks are in the process of passing it on, and obviously the economy has to respond. So, probably you're going to have a lag of several quarters. Mm. 
before a cut of 25, 50 or more is going to percolate through the economy and therefore being felt in non-oil imports. And as far as oil imports is concerned, which was the other question, mm -hmm. uh, I think the earlier question, yeah. I think that is also because the price signals have been uh, repressed. So as the government frees up those prices, you will see those imports uh, coming down or actually the growth slowing down. So I think some balance can be struck and therefore I am not that worried about current account deficit going up because of RBA's actions. Okay. Well, let me come to the CPI part uh, uh, before I go to the banker on the larger issue of uh, the utility of the rate cut in the first place. Uh, the CPI being at uh, such elevated levels, 11%, uh, uh, is it comfort zone at all for the monetary authority to uh, bring it down saying that it has no impact on food prices anyway? Uh, you know, this, if it continues in this fashion and it has continued for for three years now, near double-digit uh, consumer price inflation, uh, it is definitely directly having an impact on the deposit rates. Uh, uh, savers are not willing to uh, uh, walk into banks at uh, anything less than nine nine quarter percent for an annual deposit. Uh, therefore, uh, don't you think uh, the Reserve Bank should worry about CPI uh, and uh, perhaps think twice about a rate cut? Prasanna. I, yeah, I think the yeah, yeah, I think there are two reasons to worry about it. Uh, one is I think uh, even if you exclude food and fuel, uh, the other part of CPI, what if you may call it core CPI, mm. is also actually inching up and it's at an elevated level. I think it's around 8.5 percent. So that is not, uh, uh, I think, a matter to be trifled with. And the second issue is I think the food inflation is largely structural in nature. It is driven by high MSP prices. I think government's procurement policies as well as uh, uh, some of the welfare programs which are pushing up wages at the rural, uh, uh, at the rural part of the country. So these are factors which are not going away, and therefore there is a large structural element to inflation in India, and that is something which a monetary authority cannot ignore. So I think what this tells you is that there is a there is a limited room for RBI, and irrespective of how a non-food manufacturing inflation, which is anyway an artificial construct as far as I am concerned, mm -hmm. even if it comes down, it crashes down. I don't think it it opens up too much room for RBI to cut rates. Okay, there is another gentleman who believes there isn't much room and I think that is the banker. So, uh, Mr. Seshadri, uh, if the Reserve Bank indeed were to give you a rate cut, uh, will you really be able to reduce deposits or lending rates, uh, if, uh, 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 say, in the next couple of months? Uh, I don't think, in fact, we'll be able to reduce the interest rate that we pay on deposits, especially the retail deposits, uh, because there must be an incentive to save and unless and until the inflation, the, the headline inflation comes down in real sense, uh, uh, reduction in the deposit rate will be counterproductive. And banks do need resources, and uh, they, with especially in fact with the last quarter where there is a huge amount of churning of the liabilities, banks would have to really continue and that is the reason why you find a very high uh, interest rate regime on the deposits. Mm -hmm. However. If you really compare uh, the position that existed last year, I think uh, on a quarter-on-quarter -quarter basis, there is a, a reduction in the liability cost, which is in tune with the reduction in the inflation rates. Mm. Uh, but there is absolutely not much of a room for the banks to reduce uh, uh, the deposit rates unless and until there is a real downward movement of inflation rates. Uh, the growth has been a concern for the banks mm. and definitely interest rate uh, cycle has been a key concern and in order to see that in fact there is a, a, a push up of the credit, banks would be in a position to basically reduce, uh, pass on any uh, repo rate cut uh, possibly on account of a downward cost of funds in fact uh, between the two periods, mm. uh, any further reduction would be possible only when the liability cost comes down substantially. Okay, so